2024 is starting to look like an absolutely amazing year for MMO players. From what we know so far, there are well over 10 MMOs releasing this year, with all of them being different in unique ways while still keeping classical MMO experiences in each one. One massive issue MMOs are facing right now, though, is some game devs are not releasing the product that they promise and borderline scamming their players. In today's video, I'll be talking about 10 MMOs I believe have insane potential and are worth at least checking out. Next on the list is Blue Protocol, an action-packed high fantasy MMO being developed by Bandai Namco. The game itself has already gone through some controversy, though, in the States and in Japan as well. In the States, you can primarily find people mad either because of the censorship of the cosmetics or because their account got banned after playing on the Japanese server. But the main source of drama in the States came from Amazon Games or like thereof, as I truly felt Amazon Games was sleeping and purposely trying to withhold information on the game's release. On the other hand, in Japan, the main source of controversy was the emptiness to the game, as many people believe the game was super easy to grind up in, allowing players to rarely, if ever, return to a zone. That being said, the devs have gone through and updated the game immensely, helping with dead zones, allowing for players to have a need to return back to the beginning. The game itself, though, is fairly clean and simple to understand, as in the game you can take on full dungeons, towers, boss fights, farm breeze, sources and even farm transmog for character customization. Each one of these activities can be done with yourself or with other players. On average, most parties are a maximum of five players while still seeing others in the world. Although while doing raids or world bosses, you'll usually team up with 20 to 30 players to complete them. My personal favorite feature is the amount of class and character customization when it comes to builds, as not only there are different skill trees to go through, but different elements you can get on your weapons as well, making builds allowed to be very unique in the player's own way. Overall, I'd say the game looks very clean, especially if you like the anime art style and super flashy combat make this one of the most unique MMOs that's going to be releasing this year. But Odyssey is an up-and-coming MMO being made by Inpixel and Gameplex that looks insanely good. The game itself is being made in Unreal Engine 5 for Xbox, PlayStation, and PC. In the game, the player will be able to choose between six different classes, including Swordsman, Paladin, Sorcerer, Berserker, Assassin, and Ranger that are not gender-locked. Swordsman will be able to use swords and shields while switching to great swords, allowing Swordsmen to tank tons of damage and do massive AoE damage. Paladins can use maces and tower shields while switching to a spear. We haven't gotten much gameplay on them, but if I had to assume, the paladin might be the main tank, especially if they're able to heal themselves. Sorcerers are your typical mage in any game using a staff and spellbook, allowing sorcerers to dash around while casting massive AoE spells, making them a typical glass cannon. Zerkers will dual axes and a great axe, allowing players to do a massive amount of explosive melee damage all at once. There's really nothing crazy about the berserkers, they're just dual classes. Assassins will be able to use dual daggers and a rifle. From what we've seen so far, it will primarily do single target tick damage with the ability to do some aoe damage with its daggers but it will probably get one shot by most enemies because of the lack of armor that it has rangers are able to use a bow and a rapier the class itself looks to be very fast paced using a mixture of aoe and single target attacks in both of its weapons one thing i'd love to see in the ranger is the ability to trap and snare enemies to debuff them overall i love chrono odyssey as it gives a massive dark souls vibe in not only its art style but in its gameplay as well i can't wait to see what's to come from chrono odyssey and i hope that the devs do a massive dev update soon so maybe we get a first look at character creation or maybe a little bit more lore into the world. Next up on the list is Pax Day, an absolutely stunning sandbox MMO being developed by Mainframe Industries. The biggest issue that the game is facing right now is they're planning to add something called Plex, which is essentially like a WoW token. So you're going to be able to spend a certain amount of money to basically get something from the devs, and then you are able to sell that thing in the game. It could be extremely bad for the game, or it could just be something that doesn't really matter in the game. But until we see it fully in the works, it's really hard to determine how it is going to play out in the player's market. We'll say that this is really something that people consider to be pay to win and the devs should really look at that and decide if they still want to add it in or not because a lot of people will look at the game and even if there's a tiny bit of pay to win in the game they will just not play the game whatsoever even if it is something that will never affect them in the game from what we know so far the game has been working the exact way that they have promised and in pax day the player is going to be able to claim a zone and build whatever they like in it back to building a zone death we've already seen full mini kingdoms built by creators like asmongold and his community merely a few um really a few weeks we've created a gigantic city-state. Everything that you see here is owned by my guild. We got it. Damn. Damn. It's Pax Day? Yeah, it is. Render distance is insane. Well, like, also what's so crazy about the render distance is it's rendering other people's buildings. 
On top of being able to build your own structures, you'll also be able to explore the massive world, as it has a very similar philosophy to Elden Ring, where if you can see it, you could probably explore it. By exploring the world, not only will you be able to meet other players, but you'll be able to delve deep into dungeons, fight bosses, and even PvP to your heart's desire. I would say my favorite aspect of the game so far is the combat, as they've kept it very simple, and it feels very similar to a game like Conan Exile. Overall, as a MMO, this game is insanely unique, and has unmatched potential when it comes to sandbox MMOs in this year. To the Echo is a fantasy time-traveling MMORPG. From what we know so far, the player will be able to travel through time using Echoes, although after that, it's mainly just speculation throughout the community. If it was me designing this, though, I'd love to make it where Echoes are a mixture of dungeons, raids, and events while adding them to the main story missions to help players get used to the mechanics. In fact, one of the game's main selling points is the devs want to create something extremely unique for MMORPGs with newer technologies. That's why I believe a mechanic that allows players to warp the world further by time traveling would be insanely unique. One thing I do love so far is how similar the art style is to a game like Entrouded, a survival sandbox game that I personally believe is a high 9 out of 10. Although from the short trailer we have on Into the Echo, I hope they allow us to change the camera angle because I personally hate over the shoulder camera angles, I just think they're really lazy. Something that they could really implement into this game though is AI dungeon generation, making it where every single dungeon has thousands and thousands of different unique scenarios that could happen within the dungeon. So dungeons are more about going through and actually having fun and exploring dungeons for better loot instead of just grinding the same dungeon over and over and over again to get one item. Overall, I think Into the Echo looks absolutely amazing and I hope to see more updates coming into the future. Warframe is a fantasy MMO with very unique features being developed by Digital Extremes or more specifically Warframe devs. In this game, you'll be able to explore an area called Midrath Island while using a mixture of melee combat, magic, and music. The combat in the game is very similar to games like New World while in combat, you'll be able to switch between weapons like swords, pole arms, and bows, while using unique skills at the same time. How these skills are chosen is based on the bionic arm that your character has on. So in Soulframe, uh, rather than changing your Warframe, you're going to just change every game needs a magic arm, I assume. So that's what we have here. And you will be changing your pact, which is with the omen beasts that are in the, in the lands that you find yourself in. And uh, we're probably gonna do the Oak Tempest for this one. Yes, thank you. And then lastly, uh, a, a big important part of the game is awakening your connection to ancestors, the Ode, which are the, guy, the gods from the sky have cast a spell song on the, on the people of Alka and taken away their memories and their culture and their history, and it's up to us to remind them. So we have to seek out our ancestors, and they become, in essence, uh, the ways we customize our skills. In combat, you'll be able to play music sheets that will open secret paths and possible secret quests similar to Lost Ark as well. One issue I've seen with the game so far is they haven't shown off any MMO aspects, although it has been promoted as a MMO, making many people believe that this MMO is going to be very similar to Warframe and how that game is a MMO. My favorite thing about the game so far is how unique the arm system is, as it's something we've really never seen in a MMO ever before. Overall, the game is coming along very nicely and seems very polished. I believe once we start to see more of the MMO aspects though, it is going to take over the top MMOs in the year. Let's see if it is a post-apocalyptic MMO being developed by Starry Studios that takes place in a world being corrupted by an alien called Stardust. With this corruption taking over, the player has become a mutant human, allowing them to harness the power of Stardust and fight back. In the game, you'll explore a massive world that slowly gets harder over time with up to 3,000 players per server. In these servers, you'll be able to build your own base that'll allow you to craft and store excess items. You'll even be able to pick up your base and move it similar to a game like Fallout 76. The game is also a PvE and PvP game, making it where players can declare war on you and your guild and potentially raid your base depending on your server. As in PvE servers, most PvP is allocated into zones like the Division. PvP servers, you can easily PvP wherever your heart desires. Outside of PvP, there are full quest lines, dungeons, and massive boss fights to do as well. One thing I enjoy about the game is the art style and the storytelling about the aliens. Although something that's really bad about the game is the loot box gotcha system they've implemented to get better weapons. I believe that one thing could honestly be the downfall of Once Human. Overall, the game is insanely fun, fast paced, and has great storytelling with its unique environment environment, but we'll have to wait and see what they do about the potential pay to win from those loot boxes. Legend of Ymir is a NFT MMORPG set in Norse mythology that looks fairly good, but I do have some concerns about the game. In the game, players will make different characters with Norse traits and unique powers, although devs haven't shown how character creation is. If I was the devs, I would try to add more core races from Norse mythology, such as humans, dwarves, and maybe some more, making it where character creation would be fairly unique with tons of races, especially with the small look we already received that looks very similar to Black Desert Online. 
lines character creation. On top of this character creation, we got to see two different types of combat. Firstly, we have a preset combat that allows players to press a button at a precise time. I'd assume this is basically just for like story missions because in real combat, that wouldn't make sense whatsoever. Then we have action combat allowing players to flow between their skills similar to BDO. One thing I really dislike about these combat styles is one makes the player feel super OP, where the other makes the player feel like they're just trying to fight a tank with their bare hands. So let's hope this gets balanced a little more. How about this, the NFT part really confuses me. I really don't understand how players will earn or gain NFTs from playing this game, unless they're going to make bosses and NPCs drop gear and NFTs. Although this could have just been the original thought, and they could have changed it. I really love the concept of Legend of Ymir, especially because it's Norse mythology, but I wish the devs would show off real gameplay instead of random cinematic gameplay to make the game look better, because right now the game really looks like Black Desert Online just set in a more Norse environment, and I'm not a really big fan of that. Learn Liberty is an action-packed type fantasy MMO being made by NCSoft that is already released in Korea and is soon to be released in the States. This MMO doesn't really have anything super unique, but watching it and playing it feels really refreshing, as if I'm interacting with a older MMO. If you're a fan of static combat from games like Lineage 2, there's a high chance that you'll really enjoy the style as well. One thing I really enjoy in this game is the massive PvP battles that reminds me of ESO's world PvP. I also really appreciate how the combat is very flow-like, making it seem as if all your skills blend together. The biggest issue in the game currently is the slight pay to win. With this pay to win, you're able to buy items on the store and sell them on the market, similar to Black Desert Online. You can't buy maxed out items as the market only goes up to a certain item tier. And from what I've heard, almost no one uses the pay to win systems as they're not really worth using at all. Overall, the game is very fun, gives a classic feel to the players, and it has a very unique world building to keep you engaged. I definitely recommend it for anybody looking for a new MMO going into 2024. Project LOL is a brand new sci-fi MMO RPG that looks better than most that I've seen in a very long time. Now, with the game, we haven't seen any crazy game loops or customization yet, but what we've seen is amazing third-person combat, gear customization, graphics, exploration, and unique builds. On top of this, we've seen players be able to control different mechs for battle. that's insanely similar to Titanfall. While looking at all these different mechanics, it feels as if the devs saw the Division's combat, Destiny's movement and design, and Titanfall's robots, then put them all into a game. Though I'd say they've even taken those game mechanics to the next level, allowing the game to look insanely unique compared to others. If this game is truly the way they show in the trailer, where the world is super full of things to explore, the player can get into massive battles inside and outside of buildings with many different weapons, armor, and abilities, while being able to play with friends and get loot, then this game could completely take over the sci-fi MMORPG genre. One thing I'd really love to see is a short video on overall character customization and skins that you're going to be able to grind for, so that way you know that it's not just an endless loot grind like other games that we've played in the past. Overall, with what we've seen so far, there really isn't anything to complain about with this game. Mainly, we're just trying to figure out what all is in the game. In their trailer, though, it does look like this is a part of some sort of alien apocalypse, which I think is really cool, and it's a little nasty, too. Cage 2 a brand new fantasy MMORPG that seems to have a seamless world and is the follow-up game to Arc Age. The game itself is being made in Unreal Engine 5 with fantastic graphics, four or more classes, and multiple races to choose from. The classes we know so far are the knight using a sword and shield with a speculation to use magic, mages using a staff allowing them to cast offensive and defensive spells, warriors are able to use swords and shields with axes and heavy weapons, highly rangers will be able to use bows and arrows. There's also a really high chance there will be more classes added into the future as well, but these are the main confirmed ones right now. There's also multiple races right now, such as humans and elves, but many believe they'll be adding dwarves, forgive my pronunciation, Noyans, Farans, Harani, and Warborn, allowing players to have tons of unique builds and designs for characters. Something I'd love to see is them make every race have their own unique quest line, similar to Guild Wars 2, giving players a much deeper lore into each individual race and class. From what we've seen so far, the game looks fantastic, and I can't wait to try it out. Although anytime something is a sequel, it does bring some concern, because that sometimes means that game devs have gotten lazy. So I'm really hoping this game is extremely different from the first one to help bring some new aspects to the MMO world instead of just copy and paste content. Overall, all these MMOs look insanely good and have tons of potential to come out in this year. Obviously, they do take a lot of aspects from older games, but I believe that is a really good thing as a lot of players will not play newer games if they don't have old aspects in newer games. But all of the MMOs are also very unique in their own way, especially Project LL with its Titanfall-like mechanics. Titanic I personally really enjoyed and was very disappointed Titanfall failed to continue to deliver. 
deliver. On this list, I'm really looking forward to Chrono Odyssey as the game seems to check all the boxes for me. Not only is it fantasy, it has the Dark Souls vibe with combat and in its art style, but also in the class system as well. Especially if we get some crazy character customization, cutscenes, and some unique story to go along with the game. Let me know in the comments below what game you're looking forward to this year. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and have a wonderful day.